Welcome to Revival Records Podcast. I'm Peyton, one of the co-founders of Revival, as well as a singer, songwriter, and performer who has spent the last 20 years riding the roller coaster, otherwise known as the music business. In this podcast, I speak to talented artists, producers, DJs, music moguls, songwriters, musicians, basically anyone brave enough or just crazy enough to make the business of music their mission in life. And on today's podcast, I have the awesome privilege of going deep with the UK's multi-award winning and chart-topping songstress, Emily Sande. Sande's powerful voice and her thoughtfully crafted poetic lyrics have brought inspiration to millions of fans worldwide and earned her the respect of being considered a serious artist while also enjoying considerable commercial success in an industry that, let's face it, very few manage to ever crack. I wanted to get to know the woman behind the artist. What inspires her? What's her songwriting process like? Whether she believes in a higher power, and if so, what word does a poet like Emily Sande use to define the source of that power? And of course, we had to talk about her collaboration with Revival on our dance floor rework of her beloved and inspirational single, Brighter Days, and that incredible shared experience of recording it at Abbey Road Studios, together with the Geo Gospel Choir and the legend that is Jules Holland. For more information on Revival Records and links to all of our socials, check out our website, revivalrecords.org. And if you enjoyed today's podcast, let us know. Give it a share. Sharing is caring, after all. And follow this page before heading over to our official Revival Spotify page, where you can stream all of our latest releases. And on behalf of Revival and all of our artists, thank you for taking the time to tune in and support our mission to create great music that keeps you dancing while providing more opportunities for the artists to keep shining. And speaking of artists who shine, it's time for our chat with the luminous Emily Sande. (laughs) Let me say on behalf of Revival, all of us, you know, really uh, what a, a real treat it was uh, to work with you and have you agree to be part of the uh, project, which of course is your record. But, you know, we were all thrilled that you trusted us yeah. to let us use the record and do the revival production of that record and then come and be a part of it. And, oh, you know, we were, you. we were all really uh, chuffed by that. So oh. um, thank, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, picking the record for one. And what you've done with it is absolutely, it's so beautiful. As soon as I heard it, it was just so exciting. And I'm yeah, so when happy first that, got, yeah, when, I was yeah. like, wow, who is uh, this? What's happened? Because it was such a surprise. I didn't know anything was yeah. going to be done with it. So when I heard that you guys liked the record and you'd worked on it, I just thought the remix brings so much soul. It opens it up. It makes you just want to dance instantly. Instantly. So thank take, you for takes, that. It takes it into a different mm-hmm. uh, space, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. We're going to get back to that that record. But um but yeah, really, thank you for being here today as well. And um, we're excited to be working with you. You know, as you know, one of the main objectives really was was built around uh, two things, two objectives. One, to make super high quality productions of music that is potentially enjoyable to a wide demographic of people. Mm, yeah, Dance music, you know, house music, but with quality productions using real musicians and, mm. you know, a lot of focus and energy and yeah. effort put into the actual productions. Um, and, 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 and really providing opportunities for artists, shining a light on artists, giving after, mm. you know, after the two year pandemic, a lot of us realized we were like, uh, one, you know, Fired. one month away of no, no gigs <laughs> yeah. from the bread line. Yeah, Most exactly. people don't have a trust fund sitting there <laughs> kind of, yeah. so, you know, we kind of really want to, you know, try to do everything that we can as a label to, to, to shine a light, make sure we promote and support mm. artists and give them a family mm. and give them as many opportunities as they can to yeah. share their gifts and yeah. earn a living. And That's refreshing. so, and I know that you're kind of all about that from, mm. from my, from my research <laughs> now that I know everything about you, Emily. Um, so it's really, really cool that you're, that you're part of it and you definitely fit in oh, thanks for um, having me. with, with, with your whole objective. I, I want to, I want to start by reading uh, something to you. Um, What's going to happen now in all our cities? My people are rising. They're living in lives. Even if they have to die, even if they have to die at the moment they know what life is. Even at the 
one moment that you know what life is. If you have to die, it's all right, because you know what life is. You know what freedom is for one moment of your life. But he had seen the mountaintop, and he knew he could not stop, always living with the threat of death ahead. Folks, you'd better stop and think. Everybody knows we're on the brink. Mm. What will happen now that the king is dead? Mm. You know those words. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first song I heard from Nina Simone and it was the live performance she did, I think maybe a couple of days after the assassination. Did you see it live or did you see it live on TV? My father just played it to me. We're sitting waiting for my mum to finish work in Aberdeen just by the beach and he, he played this record and it just transported me and that's when I fell in love with Nina Simone. I said, who is this and how do I hear more? Because she's... She's touching me beyond anything I've heard yeah. before. It was the first time I'd really felt music in that depth. I'd always loved music. I loved the vocals. I loved the, you know, the glamour of all the divas. But Nina was the first time I really understood what an artist was. Yeah. And that song, you know, specifically really just blew my mind. And words that mm. still, I, reading it, I listened to it this morning and then reading the lyrics and thought, they still unfortunately resonate in a yeah. way that it's almost like <clears throat> it could have been written yesterday. Mm. You, you, you know, it's like, yeah. how far have we come? Mm. You know, but the depth of those lyrics and the, the poetry in those lyrics, I know that, you know, Nina, uh, along with Frida Kahlo mm. uh, and, and other artists that, uh, that have inspired you, you know, they are, they're true poets. And, Having now listened to so much of your music gone through, and for me, I, I love lyrics. Mm. I love reading lyrics. Yes, a, a lot of people just, like, it's not about the lyrics, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. It's all about the melody. It's all about the hook. Mm. Uh, you, you could almost put anything in there. They don't think they matter. To yeah. me, lyrics matter so much. Oh, yes, yeah. And your, 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 mm. your lyrics, all of your lyrics are pure poetry. Mm, thank you. You have a gift. Uh, you're a poet, and, 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 and you have this gift to really elevate these these themes these thoughts and, 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 and so much of your work is so inspirational it is about giving people uh hope and inspiration mm. where does that come from you, you you weren't raised particularly religious were you um not really i remember i really was curious you know we were raised christian through the school but not practicing but not. um but we do easter so i was always around the Bible one way or another. And I did, I remember around 12, 13, I began reading it and trying to, and it was the power of the word. And it was, you know, you'd read a sentence and it could just move you. And I thought, wow, there's so much power in the way something's written, the order in which the words form. So you have to be so careful. And, and with my music, because you're given such a limited time to really use that time efficiently yeah. you have three minutes and half of it's repeated yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know and these you, days <laughs> you're not even guaranteed a second first yeah, exactly. they really just want you to get in and get yeah. out in two minutes and it's done yeah, yeah. Like, i agree with you there's so i mean hearing you read those words there hearing it recited you yeah. realize stand yeah. alone stand they're alone. brilliant and i always try to make sure that the melody standing alone is powerful enough to be itself and also the lyric. And then when you put it together, they're joining forces. Do you have a system? Um, does one come to you before the other? Or do you kind of go both ways? I mean, um, it- I mean, it's always natural to sit at the piano and start just seeing what the hands will naturally do. Right. And that comes out and melodies. But I think some of my favorite songs have come from like a sentence or poetry, something that the words have melody in themselves and it will stick with you this concept i love just working from a concept and an idea and usually that comes from late night conversations or just going really deep with somebody into what does it mean to be pure what does it you know my first single heaven i was sitting with naughty boy and we just had these big long conversations about religion and he was telling me about islam and we're talking about christianity and thought basically you have to keep your soul and your heart clean that's the objective go through life and all of its pain and intricacies but at the end maintain who you are yeah and that's where you know how do how do i keep my heart clean was part of the song so it's like these little sparks and then suddenly the song's there because you've cracked what you're talking about absolutely yeah do you i mean this this is a question 
comes from years of my own experience because I, I my dad's a evangelical minister who's now retired. Mm. So I grew up in the evangelical church in the in the deep south in the okay. states. So that was a half a lifetime wow. ago. Yeah. But uh, but I, so I grew up very deeply entrenched in religion, and then I emancipated myself out of it, mm. but always had that spiritual kind yeah. of foundation. And for many years, I couldn't use the word God. Um, mm-hmm. I still felt the presence of uh, something bigger than me. Because I'd been raised singing gospel, I actually couldn't even really imagine singing secular music. It was, mm. I was in my early 30s before I yeah. broke into music because it just wasn't something that occurred to me. Mm. If it wasn't, you know, so, so that's how much it was, you know, part of my kind of childhood and my my spiritual sort of development. And uh, so it took me many years. I would mm. use universe, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, um, uh, the the source. Mm. You, know, you know, and my dad used to make fun of me and say, it sound, sounds like a, I'm always talking like a Star Wars uh, movie, <laughs> you mm. know. Mm. Do you use the word uh, I did finally come around. About, <laughs> it's it's one syllable. It's short. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I now know what, that it doesn't mean what I yeah. was had in my head. It's, you know, it's, mm. not, it's not an old white man with a long beard yeah, casting yeah. out judgments for every little yes. stupid thing we do. But that took a long time. Do you use the word God or do you use a replacement or do you? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm on a similar journey. So what you described there, because it's, 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 it's the connotations that come with that word. And yeah. sometimes I feel that as powerful and expressive words can be, they can also be limiting. So I did find myself trying to describe it in a different yeah. way because it is beyond even to try put this into a book or into rules or, you know, I sometimes I felt, am I missing the point of just how the magnitude and can it really be contained into one word? So I think I'm on the same journey, huh. you know, universe, the source, the mother, the father, yeah. whatever. But it's at the end of the day, it's a feeling and maybe there are no words and that's where melody comes in. I think it's a really beautiful bridge between absolutely two worlds in a sense. So yeah, I'm still on the journey, but I think now I'm I'm resigning to the fact I don't think I ever will be able to put it into words. I can try my best. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, t- yeah, it's, 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 it's bigger it's, than anything we can imagine. I think that's the whole point that we'll ne- we can't really see in this lifetime what is to come. My friend, uh, she's a Baha'i, and uh, she said they really describe this life just as a baby's in a womb. There's this very thin veil between this this world and the next world. But the baby will never know. It might hear the mother. It might, f- how it feels in the womb, you know, sounds and different things from the outside world. But this very thin layers, until the baby's born, yeah. it doesn't, it can't feel this reality. So they say this is like another womb. We can touch it in ways and perhaps through music, I feel that's the closest I do get to touch you know whatever heaven the next whatever is next but we can only trust the process it's our it's our little secret door Mm. kind of into that putting the ear to the wall yeah you get to kind of (laughs) stick your foot into it (laughs) I have moments that are transcendent Mm. when you're connecting with the I think particularly when you feel that you're connected somehow you're really connecting with an audience yes because you know, they're strangers and yet yeah. somehow you're all, Yeah, I've had moments where I thought there was light coming out of my hands and I thought, am I hallucinating? Wow. Is this a, is it, you know, Yeah, it was almost like I could see, you know what I'm yeah. thinking? God, I can never, ever mention this to anybody. Yeah. All of my friends, you know, will think yeah. I've lost it. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it's, it is light. Yeah. And love. Yes. And coming together, I think that's, you know, us being separate isn't a natural state. And I think the more we come together in music, you bring thousands of people. And I think that's when we get closer to actually realizing what it is and stop trying to contain it either within a word or, you know, a set of beliefs. It's it's so beyond. And we, we need all of our experiences to get anywhere near a true understanding. Have you done a lot of dance music? I mean, I, apart, I mean, I know you've just done this incredible uh, collaboration with Nile Rodgers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's so cool. That was awesome. Yeah. What a great record. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, he's a I love it. And I love the video oh, I mean, to work you. with, to work with Nile Rodgers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but is that, was that kind of the first, like really kind of unabashedly just disco but, kind of record you've ever done? Definitely disco for sure. It's full on disco. And But what I loved about Niall is even though it was because we, you know, we wrote it on guitar. So yeah. it's, you oh, know. He's all about yeah. that. Yeah. So it was nice to put some soul and then he, the production brought it to life. I mean, that was an incredible experience. And I worked with David Guetta before and, but usually it will be remixes of something right, I've done. But I mean, I love it. It's, 
You, you worked with David Guetta. Did you actually? Yes, we did a song called "What I Did for Love," which every time I'm in the gym, it seems to come on. But that's what I love about <laughs> dance music, and and I also um, I'll always end up li- listening to dance music around like winter, January, because it's you need that energy, and it just lifts your mood. Absolutely. It gets you moving, and. After a while, I was like, I can't listen to any more slow, sad songs <laughs> because it's just the world is a slow, sad the song world right is now. A slow, sad I just, song. I need some you up. Need some, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, well, yeah. And had, did you grow up with it? Did you grow up loving dance music? Going down to the disco in Ab- was it Aberdeen? In sure? Aberdeen, yeah. We would go to Aberdeen when we we're almost old enough and go to the clubs. And you know, hip hop, all of that was great. But yeah. when I started listening to more, you know, recently just listening to bicep or th- or house music where it's um like the blaze where they're mixing beautiful melodies with the beat i was like oh there is a way to do both you know it doesn't have to just be this uh, loop monotonous yeah it doesn't have to be that at all you can feel soul you can f- you can have this experience within dance music so i'm really enjoying it and that's really the roots of it you know the, the way it all came about you know mm-hmm. the it, it comes from this sort of incredibly creative sort of time yeah. it, where, you know, uh, hip hop and R&B artists and DJs were finding ways to sort of, you know, yeah. make these records and make them last. Mm. And then, you know, the LGBT community as well. It, yeah. it really comes from such an amazing time in history yeah. where I think a lot of people were finding their voice yes. and finding a space where they felt safe. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, and, and we're finding their tribe. Yeah. You know, and there's uh, power in it. There's power yeah. in it. There's power in it. And you can take gospel. You can take mm-hmm. even a country song or a folk song. What I love about it is like, I always think of it, it's not where the name comes from, but in my mind, house music is called house music because it's like a house. <laughs> and in this house, everything can live. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can take an opera cool. song and make it into yeah. a house record. You can take an Emily Sandy record and yeah. turn it into a house record. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I like that. Um, but back to you and back to your incredible accomplishments. Okay, let's just quickly. I mean, let, you have <laughs> you have had a bit of a ride. Yes, yeah, it's been yeah. fun. <laughs> I mean, your sister, you know, she sends in a video of you singing. Was yeah. it to Trevor Nelson's? Uh, uh, yeah. Like a, the urban pop yeah, music. Low down, yeah, Lowdown, yeah. And you win, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and get offered a record deal? Yeah. Were you... a how old were you? I think I was about 16 or 17. And I was like, wow, this is it. My dreams are all made. And then... Uh, but you didn't take the deal? No, I think the deal was for like a, a single. And if it goes well, we might give you another single. Right. And, and at right. that point, you know, my dad wanted me to go to school. Right. And I mean, my dad was definitely up for it. But we I found management at that point. And they said, this isn't great. You should wait. We should showcase you down in London. Yeah, you know, I was doing a lot. I released an EP up in Glasgow because I always had this burning desire. As much as I loved what I was studying, I just wanted to sing. I just wanted to express myself with music. And I was, you know, they tell me to look down this microscope and count these cells. And I was half well, of my you, brain was like writing a song and the other. But you like, did a lot of that. You yeah. you actually was was it just. Did you study five years? Yeah, I was studying while well, it was a med school in Glasgow. So I did um, three years of a main course and then a fourth year of inter- an intercalated degree. In neuroscience? In neuroscience, yeah, which was kind of, they let you pick whatever you want to specialize in that year. And so, neuroscience would be the study of the brain? Yeah, yeah, the brain, central well, nervous system. That must system. be helpful. Yeah, it was. I mean, <laughs> eventually I would think I would have To help all to your to... crazy artists trends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, hey. Yeah, take a seat. <laughs> you're going crazy, but don't worry, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I'm here. I can help. <laughs> I mean, it was great, but I, I knew music was for me, and then I really took a risk and moved to London, and luckily met Naughty Boy. I had the management. I got published, so it was a hustle, but I'm glad I, I took the leap. Well, and you, you what, four Brits later, yeah. you know, a performance at the White House for Obama. I mean, how yeah. surreal with, that uh, was, yeah. I mean, for King, with Carol, mm. um, Carol King. I mean, mm-hmm. this is, that was a crazy that's day. a dream come true yeah. in itself. Uh, I actually saw a video of you. I, I love this. Taylor Swift was singing oh, at yeah. the Ocho Arena. <laughs> and like, she like makes this huge thing about last year when I was here, you know, at the Brits, there was this artist I fell in love with. She really gave you, that yeah. was, she's very generous. Yeah, I, she's and I, lo- I, I love artists yeah. like that. And uh, <laughs> up you ride. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift, man. I mean, like, yeah. that's for you. Yeah. So, you know, what a ride. But I, I thought it was really interesting that you, you talk about this new, this new experience of writing this album without the uh, agenda of having to sort of have a prescribed 
idea of what it was and where it's going to fit mm. into a, you know, music industry. Mm. They like their compartments. They like their mm-hmm. titles. They yeah. want they want their neat little yes, yeah. boxes to, yeah. <laughs> for everything to fit in. Yeah. And I love that, you know, you you the way you've talked about this new album is that you just, you just made music that you knew felt right for you and it yeah. didn't have that agenda. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, what was interesting for me a week before, you know, the national lockdown began, I had just left, parted ways with um, Virgin, who I'd been with from the beginning of my career. Right. So like I was like saying, 10 years. yeah, that whole industry element to what I was doing just disappeared. And it is, it's a, it's a big thud to the ground. It kind yeah. of feels like in the Matrix where <laughs> Neo wakes up and like unplugs his stuff and like looks around. <laughs> you know, you're there. It's locked down. There's no money coming in. Yeah. You've just left He's your like, label. The stylist gone. The cre- Everybody's gone and all that's left is you. So, um, yeah, I think that really changed my mind frame in that, okay, yes, I have to deal with the reality of what's going on and the responsibility. I'm going to have to fund everything myself, et cetera. But, um, I have the freedom to do what I want. You know, no one can tell me that's yeah. not quite an Emily Sunday song or no one can tell me any of that stuff yeah. anymore. And I can make my own mistakes, but also I can be responsible for my own success in that way. And, and like you said, like we're talking about at the beginning, being a lyricist is my pride. And, you know, that's what I really want to pride myself on. So that's why I felt I could go in and out of genres as long as my lyrical style was consistent. Um, so yeah, I had a great yeah, time. And you, and you do like, mm-hmm. uh, 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 ox- uh, is it oxygen? Yeah. So sexy. <laughs> Thank you. I was, really, I was shocked by it. I was like, <laughs> this is really cool. And, you know, you're exploring in a way, uh, it, it, maybe, you know, I mean, I'm, all the songs I had heard before, they were, you know, the, so uplifting, kind mm. of giving everybody this sort of Thank fuel you. to kind of stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> not top yourselves. It's yeah. going to be all right, guys. Yeah. You know, things can only get better sort yeah. of vibe. And then it felt like you're kind of, you know, like you're kind of exploring. So is that maybe partly because you're in love? Uh, was this new relationship yeah. inspirational in I that mean, way? Definitely the freedom in that sense and feeling in love. I mean, it just takes you to another. You of know, course. I mean, you're kind well, of floating. Of you're like, I mean, oh, yeah, nothing I, matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This and is the old. I mean, it really yeah. is like. Uh, it's yeah. like the best high, the best drug ever. It's and, the best drug ever. And then on top of that, I didn't have work commitments. You know, we were just in lockdown. Yeah. So it was a Great really timing. nice time of freedom yeah so that was really cool and then also kind of making two albums side by side was great because i said okay the first album i really want to make an artistic stamp in that i'm gonna do what i want now and if you really want to come with me in this journey let's go i want the same feeling in my music but i really want this freedom to be who i am and for people to get to know me and then this next album that's coming later this year was okay now we've got that now we've done you know got that statement out musically now we can just okay, you know what I mean. Now I can say. <laughs> so that what's coming next is quite markedly um, I'd different. Say, mm, it's hard to describe, but it does remind me more of like the first album. It's definitely got very big vocal moments in it. I mean, you don't. Um, people might think it's even stranger than the last <laughs> album, but it's for me. I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait to do it. I, I love the video for Family. Oh, thank you. I I love that. I mean. Is that something you've done before, like the choreography in <laughs> no, that? No, that was the first time. I mean, I was just really on, I'm going to shave my head and I'm going to dance. And it was so nice to have a, a management team, a label, just this whole network behind me that was like, cool, we trust you and we respect you. So let's let's do and, it. And who, and who uh, right. So, and did you have to find, I mean, you know, because you're with Chrysalis now, right? Yeah. Did Chrysalis they help Records. you like with the videos and stuff? Yeah. And they li- really, you know, I sent an email. I'm kind of thinking about this. These are the references and they went with it. So I, that's what I really love about being on an independent label. And with having this relationship where I do feel that they see me as an artist and a musician rather than a product. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and not having, yeah, not having to feel that you're selling uh, this sort of idea of who is Emily Sunday. I mean, yeah. you know, th- this must be I- I- exhausting. I mean, the, and especially if you're not somebody. I mean, if you you grew up shy, or yeah, <laughs> you have to learn that part of it. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, you know, it's. I think it's you're always changing as a person, especially between. I, mean, I think I came into the industry around twenty three, twenty four. Now I'm thirty six. So especially between those years, you change so much, you learn so much and having to kind of 
stay as you once were sold is quite a box. Yeah, it's like almost like you got you've almost got to make some declaration. That, yes. All right, everybody, I'm different now. I'm actually, yeah. You change. Yeah. I'm not a true <laughs> yes, blonde. I'm changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read these lyrics from family. Um, no red light or dark night can stop me. No wall, no matter how tall, can block me. Mm-hmm. I love that lyric. Thank well, you. the sun is out and the family's good and we're living life like we always knew we could. It's lovely. I took a little time out just to meditate and my spirit said, why are you always late? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I got a need for speed and a head for dreams, but I had to slow down, see the wood for the trees, breathe easy. But now my energy's on 110 and I'm never going to let them bring me down again. Believe me, No red light or dark night can stop me. No wall, no matter how tall, can block me. If you're feeling low, know you'll rise again. Got knocked down nine times, but got up for ten. You got this. And though it seems like the night won't end, the morning's right around the the river bend, I promise. No red light or dark night can stop me. No wall, no matter how tall, Mm. can block me. Powerful (laughs) words. They remind me of my Angelou's and Still I Rise, Mm. you know. A lot of your your work has the has similar essence to some of some of um, oh, Maya's writing to me, um, and a lot of you know that that idea of rising, that idea of lifting up and mm. being elevated beyond all of this. For you, that is is that the reason you do it? Um, and, and you know, I know in the end, in the beginning, it might have been the the allure mm. of the outfits and the idea mm. and the glamour. But I mean, when it comes down to it now, you know, you said you asked yourself during the pandemic, you know, <clears throat> why am, well, mm. what am I doing? Yeah. You know, now, but now that I'm, yeah, I'm at the end of a contract, uh, mm. uh, like the plug's been pulled out of the wall. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, you're only as, what do they say? You're only as uh, relevant as your latest mm. Hit and yeah. oh yeah, yeah, like thanks. That's yeah. that's a, you know lifetime of work. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It's you know. So what is it? Is it, what drives it? Is it the need to minister in a, in that in that way, not in a religious way, but you know, yeah, to lift people up, to to give people a message of hope. Yeah, I think it is, and I think like let's say yes, I like to see Mariah Carey in her glamour, but it was what she was saying, like in Hero. I remember taking so much strength from that song and it lifting me up yeah. so many times when I, if I felt bullied or if I just felt isolated or so different. So I remember that feeling of nothing can break me because I've heard this song and I can play it whenever I want. Yeah. So I think, um, and the, the one thing that I really felt was unfair during the pandemic was people's confidence being knocked. And I do feel like this, for one reason or another, our confidence is under attack. Our spirit, like our energy and vibration is being brought all the way down. The world's vibration. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's fair to get people on their knees and then kick them when they're down, tell them to. I just, I don't think it's fair that people should be feeling this way and be put in a situation of desperation. And if I can, through the music, give them a, give them riches yeah. through sound and say, you know, well, I don't know how we're going to get through this, but I know we will. Because yeah. I think even though I was shy as a kid, I was always, I had a very strong confidence that one way or another, this would work out and one way or another, we'll find a way. And naturally I felt as a leader, you know, so I think that's why I do the music and the music's part, the music's part of the message. You know, now I really want to be able to, to speak and let my career and the way I live my life be an example of pushing forward and finding that inner confidence you know you decide how you feel not the surroundings absolutely this morning my uber driver and i had a very interesting talk uh about the state of the world and you know and in the end he was saying you know well what do you do uh uh you know i mean most of us can do nothing you know mm. we don't have any power and 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 I, and, and I was saying you know actually i think everybody has the power to make a contribution to mm-hmm. lifting the uh yeah. vibrational frequency yeah you're right as musicians we really have this tool at our hands and we can mm. we can really do something active but even just i think no matter how how small or or you know or, or your life is or you know maybe you'll you don't know a lot of people. Maybe mm. you don't, you know, you don't have a lot of people who are under your tutelage. Mm. 
just being kind. I think, yeah. and, you know, just, just taking the time maybe to smile yeah. at somebody yeah. or, or checking on a neighbor that's lonely that you never would normally. I, I don't know. I think every single time we, 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 we do anything like this, mm. even if it's not seen or yeah. it's a way of, of, of flipping the, the light switch back on. Exactly. And getting that vibrational yeah. frequency back yeah. up. And not letting music be hijacked. I think music is such a powerful form. And yes, you can, you know, you want to be realistic and art is, you know, reflecting life in a way. So yes, you have to talk about pain. Yes, you have to talk about the dark side of the world, but the power of music is phenomenal. Yeah. And we think too much about it as an industry, which it isn't. This The music industry is there to help music get out there, but yeah. music should be very isolated and protected from the industry. I think the, the creation of it, so I just feel that we need to remind ourselves as musicians, as creatives, the power we hold. Maybe then we're not going to get paid for it, but there's still yeah. a power there and it can change people's lives. And Absolutely. If we can, I think that's the hard thing, trying to write a positive song that is isn't cheesy or corny like to really get someone's heart like there will be brighter and you days you do it so well I try, you, I, I that's try. the thing you know watching those lyrics and i'm like <laughs> oh man she's managed again not to go for the obvious yeah and because it's hard yeah it's like you have to have the reality yes it is difficult and that's what i was trying to do with brighter days like we've seen it all it's all happened to us it might all happen again but there will be brighter days and you know i, I get such inspiration reading about lives or situations where people have been in the most difficult, darkest positions, yeah. but they've held on to hope and spread it. Even the story of gospel and where, you know, through slavery, exactly. the beauty of what's come out, there's, and we have to face it, the world may be heading to a very dark place, but we have to hold on to that confidence in wh whatever it is, but it's something within you, which is a light. And I always say, you know, everybody keeps going on about the darkness, but the darkness doesn't really exist. It's just the absence of light. Yes. So yeah. really, once once you illuminate, mm. you know, switch on your light, uh, you, darkness is disseminated. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's gone. You yeah. Know? So it doesn't even exist. It's really just, yeah. by it's, definition, the absence of something. Yeah. So we do have the power if mm -hmm. we shine, if we choose to shine yes. the light. Yeah. And yeah. Not everybody is shining the light, but yeah. you, you are shining it bright. And, uh, and I have to say, I'm, um, we, we just, I love the fact that we got to do this record yeah, with you. you. I mean, what an amazing experience with Jules Holland at, uh, uh, at the, you know, iconic, legendary, yeah. Yeah. uh, yeah. And I'm, you probably worked at, uh, Abbey Road Studios before, no? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, yeah it yeah. was wonderful. Even just going to the building, you have this excitement in you, like we're, we're going to have your great to see one, the effect it has around. on all the other musicians yeah. as well. It People gives taking everybody pictures. a boost. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's so lovely just to see within your whole organization, you all have the same ethos. It's very rare to come across um, any type of institution where you all are on the same page. So, well, and we share something that I don't even know if you realize this, but you know, we share a lot of things, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, the way all of this came to be, and I'm not going to go into it now, but the truth is mm -hmm. we're not making music really with any uh, prescribed idea of what we need to do to sell it. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a success. We want, yeah. the, we want the whole project to be a success yes. for a lot of reasons, mainly because we want to be able to give the artists uh, yeah. the, 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 <laughs> this platform uh, that, you know, and, and, and be able to do more. Mm -hmm. The truth is, like you, we're in this position right now where we are just making the music mm. that we think we want to make because it's the best music we can possibly, you know, these yes. productions. It's not trying to fit a style, yeah, not yeah. trying to sell to a certain mm. demographic, not trying to get a number one hit that's yeah. going to be picked up by the... Yeah. Actually, we have, we're, we're just making great music. And yeah. how often does this happen in music? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, yes, let's oh, go. Just be creative yeah, and yeah. make the best possible music you can make. Yes. And then yeah. see what happens. Yeah, and exactly. here we are sitting with you, so can't be that bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <it's> great. <laughs> Doing something right, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. What does leaving a legacy look like to you? A lot of artists, writers, and performers, they, they, they want to leave this. Mm. legacy and is that something that you feel eh. it would be nice and it's i guess it does give you a feeling of living on in some sense 
I mean, doesn't I guess, I guess leaving music in in, yeah. in, in, in a way you I guess do it's the like feeling. writing, you know, yeah. you, you do. Because, you know, eventually your songs will kind of disappear or whatever. But I do feel that um, leaving a feeling every time someone plays that, they're going to feel a certain way that yeah. you may have felt when you were alive. So it's just yeah. leaving these breadcrumbs of feelings. That's I think is quite that's cool. nice. The way we do when we when we hear Aretha Franklin now yeah. or like, George yeah. George Michael yeah. you know, record. I mean, yeah, that was what he said. I remember seeing a interview with George Michael, mm-hmm. and he was just like, "Yeah, he's like, but I want more than anything because he was also an artist who really was just a writer and didn't mm-hmm. want to have to do all this, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you you know, you we talked a little bit about the the lack of mental health care and nurture for artists yeah yeah he was a perfect example of someone mm. that just all he wanted to do was just make great music yeah he yeah. wanted to just write great music strong yeah. and they wouldn't let him mm. and in the end you know look what it got him yeah but you know had, had he all he wanted to do was leave a legacy of songs that made people yeah feel yeah. you know um all right give me five i'm gonna ask five five different songs okay uh and i'm gonna ask that represent different things okay okay um, for example, a song that uh, that you listen to when you want to be cheered up. Is there a song in particular that always puts a smile on your face? Um, I love um, Whitney Houston's version of "I Love the Lord." Gosh, I'm kind of I'm like, hey, man, man gospel's my back, <laughs> and I'm like, Whitney, I love the Lord. Yeah, it is beautiful. Anything with a gospel choir, like of you course. can't be in a bad mood at the end of it. It's like, I love, the, I Lord. love the Lord, and it's just yeah. Every time I was like, okay, okay. I can deal with life. <laughs> okay. I'll yeah. be, I've got my homework cut out for me. I've got to look that up immediately. All right. Whitney Houston's I Love the Lord. I think it was with the Georgia Mass Choir, actually. The Georgia Mass yeah. Choir. Amazing. Um, and a song for when you want to dance. Is there a song that always puts you Ooh. in the mood to have a little shimmy? Um, I mean, I mean. She gets me like Seven Eleven. I love her new stuff. It's so unusual, and the production's quite she's, she's very artistic. It's very artistic. It's almost like like, like you ha- It kind of takes a little yeah. It takes a little minute yeah to be like oh oh that's really that's, good that's yeah pretty but, genius but, yeah. See, she's not trying to fit in the yeah in, in the boxes. I love she's, she's making different shaped boxes yeah and, and not getting the- complacent with it yeah. So maybe from her new album. You won't break my soul. That definitely gets me yeah, up and going. That is an amazing record. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> um, what about a song that makes you happy, feel hopeful? Is there besides your own? Uh, it makes me feel happy and <laughs> hopeful. Um, probably. Who? Stevie Wonder. He always makes me feel good. Yeah. Like, uh, One in particular. Um, Sir Duke. I mean, I know these are like these. My answers have been the same for like ten years because no one's gonna beat these guys. <laughs> Of course, you know. I know. Is there a song that you that you think was so perfectly sculpted and as a lyricist mm. and as a writer that you wish you had written yourself Ooh. when you hear it? Yes, probably. Almost doesn't count by Brandy. I think lyrically that is phenomenal. Okay. Almost doesn't count. Almost made you love me. Almost made you cry. Almost meant, but almost doesn't count. Like, I just think it's so simple and poetic. Just beautiful. I love that one. Tony, when you're a lyricist, but somebody that manages to find the... It's still poetic. Mm. and so simple. Yes. That combination. That's hard. That's hard. Because we can all be, you know, overthinking. Well, we and, can all be. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, you know no, what I mean. Some like, of us can. But, you, you can hear songs that are trying to be smart in a way, but doesn't quite connect. But yeah. you're so tr- it's that simplicity. Like oh. Because it needs to be. It's, yes. it's, 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 you're right. You get, mm. you get a couple of verses in a course, you get two and a half minutes. Yeah. This isn't a brain surgery. Yeah. You got to present something super simple. Yeah, exactly. But it's got to be poetry and yes. it's got to be profound. That is a hard synthesis. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Brandy. All right, we got that. We're going to make, yeah. we're going to make a list of these and put them I on do, Spotify. Was that Diane Warren that wrote that? I'm not sure. Oh, did she? I think so. Yeah. Who I met a couple of times in LA. She's she's fantastic as well. But you write for a lot of other people too, don't you? Yeah, I used to more so, but uh, now and again I will. Yeah. You wrote for did did did, did you write did, did I read somewhere that you wrote for um I know you wrote for Cheryl Cole. Yes. But did you read did you write for um Susan Boyle? I did. Yeah, actually, I did, did you with me- did, did, uh, Naughty Boy. Yeah. Did you? I, originally, did, they wanted did you meet her? clown for Susan Boyle. But I really wanted to keep it for myself. But we wrote another song for her, actually. I think about the season changing. Yeah, it was on one of her albums. So cool. Did you get to meet her? 
No, sadly not. I think she's really cool. I think she's probably one of the biggest rock stars we've had. <laughs> yeah, she, she's an enigma. Yeah. That and she's ho- really funny. Like I've watched a few really of her funny. MTV Cribs or there's some program where yeah. I saw actually. Is she still going? Is she still? I think so. Yeah, she's still doing her thing. Still loves music. I love it. What's the uh, What's the worst piece of advice somebody's ever given to you? I remember someone telling me, um, you know, this, I was because... <laughs> I was trying to leave med school and, um, you know, they said, if you just focused on, if you just stop distracting yourself with this music stuff. Mm. I mean, she probably was right. She, you know, she basically said, you'd be a great doctor if you yeah. just stopped with this music stuff. But I think it's so hard for someone to understand what's in your heart. Of course. So that, and I remember like people just saying, it's never going to happen for you. You're in this tiny Scottish village. So it's nice to look back on these things and just think, I was right. And <laughs> <laughs> no, that came out so wrong, but you know what I mean? Like, it's good well, to have- bitches, <laughs> four Brits later, Obama is a fan. <laughs> Sometimes you need to pick yourself up because you're, you know, people forget at the very beginning, you look insane. People are like, what are you doing? You're giving up a good career. This is never going to work. Do you know the chances of this working? They're doing it almost to protect you from failure and disappointment and And then having to finance the rest of your life because you net you failed to launch yeah exactly (laughs) so i get people do it to protect but and but sometimes when it does work out you have to give yourself a little pat on the back because it's not easy when it's you against the world you know and and everyone will say oh i did that i told you that i'm the one that everyone wants to claim that it wasn't actually you that did it yeah and of course you're helped by a, a, a big team i'm not saying i did it by myself but sometimes you just have to just for your own sanity be like of course okay I, I knew what I was doing and I trusted my instinct yeah. more importantly. Like, But that brings up another question I wanted to ask you, which I think is important for a lot of these artists uh, that we're working with, uh, some of whom, you know, you'll, 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 you'll meet um, that have been in the business for a long time. You know, they've had records that have gone out, done well, dance records, worked mm. with the likes of people like David Guetta. And and, 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 and they're touring <laughs> around the world, yeah. backing up people like you and, and uh, other uh, big artists. But, you know, they still haven't necessarily found that moment where mm. they've come into their, you know, their success story, mm. whatever. This idea of success, my definition of it over the years has changed drastically from when I started what I imagined success to be to kind of what what I have sort of evolved now into mm. and, 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 and the idea of success for me makes me think different. What did success mean to you when you were starting out and has your definition of success changed over the years? Uh, yeah, it's definitely changed. I think at the beginning it was very much, um, well, one, being appreciated for what I'm doing, proving a lot of people wrong in a way. That was quite a big thing for me. And yeah, being um, to be honest, at the beginning, it was really, oh my gosh, I get to put out an album. Right. It was very simple goals. Right. Not simple, <laughs> but it was yeah. very small steps. Like, wow, imagine being able to release an album. Exactly. And I think it's so important to keep those small goals in place. Otherwise, you're always, you're got your head's over there and you're missing the little success, everyday successes. Well, you're moving the parameters all the time. Yeah. And so you don't, you're not giving yourself the credit. Yeah. You're like, oh, the, but I want that. And you're always, you know, you're never happy. So I think at the beginning it was, I want people to know me and I want to, my music to be known. And then, but now I think, you know, a lot of it's to do with feeling respected as well. You know, as a writer, I want to feel that the work I'm putting out is useful and kind of. And do you get this from your do you need this from your peers specifically or do you get this from the people who are listening to your music and communicating with you? Is it the letters from the hospital room saying, hey, yeah. Brighter Days is the song that kept me going while my marriage was falling apart? Yeah. Or is, it, is it that? Yeah, I think. Or do, you, or do the Brit Awards matter? You know, do you need them? I mean, it's, it's lovely to have it's them. And to have it's them. nice to feel celebrated, of course. And especially when you've, you know, you're quite timid and you, you need that kind of, of uh, feeling to, to feel confident. But nowadays, you know, with age, I feel like I have the inner confidence. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It's when people say that's affected my life. And that's really, you know, because we can put a music all day. People listen to it in the background. But to have a song that actually becomes 
somebody's experience. There's nothing, there's no way to engineer that. And there's no way to manipulate that. It's really if they hear the purity of the message. So I think, yeah, for me, that is definitely a big way I define success now, the effect on people's lives. And if it's encouraged someone, and I had a song on the last album called Yes, You Can. I was really specifically thinking about those who may be uh, considering suicide. And, you know, I've had letters from people saying, you know, I needed to hear this tonight because I tonight I was going to do it <laughs> and stuff like that. It's beyond anything. Yeah. Even if I'm broke on the street, I'll still be yeah. singing because you don't know what message people are receiving. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the second one we've yet to hear, but it's coming. Yes. In around October. So it's quite nice to have some time to really get into that mode again. Like the album's finished as of last week, which is nice. Right. And then now it's just knowing which performances you're going to be doing, actually having time to rehearse and get into like. And the videos, are like, you doing like these cool, fun- I love the videos you yeah. made. For the- yeah. So you're going to do those videos uh, again? Hopefully. I mean, I think something cool. I mean, do you, do you, do you come up with, you know, some of, is it, is it like a collaboration? Yeah. I'll kind of, I kind of want to be doing this or I want to, especially with the family video. That was, so it's I nice love to, that. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. I love that. It's really, really cool. It's just, it, again, it's poetry. And yet it's so simple. Yeah. It's just profoundly simple. Oh, uh, the, the concept, the whole yeah. setup. I was thinking, God, you don't, you don't need anything. You've got like yeah. the space. Yeah, just, you've just got to be And creative. yet it's well done. So yeah, it, oh, thank you. You know, and the, the, the dancers and, the, and your movements. Oh, thanks. Because yeah, you're not enjoyed... really somebody that, you know, I don't, you, know you don't yeah, do a lot not really a dancer, of staged choreographer. I was like, let's try it. It's the first choreography I've ever learned. So I really enjoyed it. Who was the choreographer that? that... Uh, Liv Lockwood. She was awesome. She's like, just, you know, you've got to learn to be seen. And I thought, wow, this is cool. Yeah, but you do it. You own it. You oh, know, cool. you, you do you. it, with, you know, you, you you totally do it like you <laughs> with real, real, real pride. And I, uh, oh, yeah, cool. I love you. it. And family, man. I mean, I think a lot of people don't have the uh, advantage or the, the blessing of even having the family that they were born into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the family that we choose. Some of us get to have both. Yeah. You know, I'm blessed. My parents love me and, uh, you know, they didn't kick me out for being gay, even mm. though my dad's a Pentecostal preacher, yeah. you know, and they, yeah. they went through the process. Yeah. But family is, is, is everybody that we... Oh, yeah. So important. So it? important. Yeah. And these days, it's more important than ever that we have this family. And mm. revival is very much about creating a family. Mm. And, uh, and Emily, I can say without a doubt, we are so happy that you are part of this family. Oh, thank you. I'm very happy and, to be a part um, of it. I think it's, awesome. it's going to be a lot of fun uh, yes. to see what happens with this track. People yeah. are, everybody I played it to just is going nuts. Oh, my awesome. parents, you know, my parents, <laughs> my mother was in the hospital, oh, got yes. diagnosed with cancer and I was sending her because we were in the, mm. you know, in, in the studio recording it at uh, Abbey Road and I sent her that little video and I just said, mom, Better days are ahead, yeah. you know, and um, thank God, you know, she's uh, she's been operated on and doesn't oh, seem to be any remnants of the cancer and she's doing better yeah. than ever. And uh, she was so encouraged, but she loved the song. Oh, fantastic. You know, they, Your speech was so inspiring. It really is so important, you know, to remind people why we're here. Why we're here. Why we're doing what we're doing. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you thank so you much. For me. It's so nice. Nice to get to know you better. And, yeah, you too. And now I know all this stuff about you. <laughs> I have to write your autobiography. Yeah.